This meeting is being recorded. I welcome you to our the Effective Mediators Masterclass. This is the October CLEE series that is our continuous learning education and experiential. Uh, today is on the 29th day of October in the year 2022. My name is Wangari Kabiru, the convener at Wasiliana Hub and a chartered mediator. And I'm pleased to be um, having uh, the, uh, to host this session with our masterclass facilitator, mediator Patricia Ketch, who is a counseling psychologist and a mediator. Today's topic is on dealing with repairing broken trust in the mediation chambers. The Effective Mediator Masterclass is a series that's hosted by Wasiliana Hub so as to advance the skills of mediators in not only process, but also in other salient areas that influence or affect mediation and make you more effective to be able to serve your clients. So Karibu Sana for this session. This session is recorded and will be made available for uh, mediators to be able to go through at the Wasiliana Hub uh, site. And that is wasilianahubmediators.co.ke. We will start off with the words of the Kenyan national anthem, Wimbo wa Taifa, Wanchi ya Kenya. And today we will go through the third stanza in Kiswahili. Natujenge taifa letu, and yo wajibu etu. Kenya istahili heshima, tunga ne mikono pamoja kazini, kila siku tuwe na shukrani. Just as the national anthem, today we are here together, natuna shukrani. The last time we were together, we were together in a session where we were going through a discussion in context of the Kenyan elections, which were concluded in September, in, in, um, which were running in August and concluded in September. And so we give thanks to God, to Nashukrani, for the opportunity that we have to be able to connect here together um, after that particular session. And as mediators, it is also of interest to us that every year on September 21st is what is known as the Peace Day or the United Nations International Day of Peace. And it is celebrated on September 21st after the United Nations General Assembly voted to designate the day as a period of nonviolence and ceasefire. That was in the year 2001. The Peace Day was established in 1981 by the United Nations. The theme for this year is End Racism, Build Peace. And I'll share with us a statement by the Secretary General for, of the United Nations, um, Antonio Guterres, for this year's Peace Day. And this is his statement. Racism continues to poison institutions, social structures, and everyday life in every society. It continues to be a driver of persistent inequality, and it continues to deny people their fundamental human rights. It destabilizes societies, undermines democracies, erodes the legitimacy of governments, and the linkages between racism and gender inequality are unmistakable. So that is a statement by the United Nations uh, uh, Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, on the theme for this year, which is End Racism, Build Peace. And now to bring us to our session today, which is uh, facilitated by our masterclass facilitator, mediator, Patricia Ketch. Our session today is on dealing with repairing broken trusts in the mediation chambers. And as indicated, our focus is on developing mediators to become more effective mediators, or specifically the effective mediator, by hosting this series of the masterclass. So why have a topic or a focus on trust for the effective mediator? So firstly, we consider that trust is the backbone of healthy relationships. And these relationships, whether they are in family, in friendships, in family, in business, or even in organizations. 
And our topic today is on repairing broken trust in the mediation chambers. So what does repair mean or represent? So normally repair is associated with fixing something. And many a times we associated with fixing something that is tangible. For example, a car that is broken down, a chair that has been broken, a pot, a dress that needs mending. And so in other words, what is being repaired has been broken, damaged, or it's not functioning at its capacity. And so in the repair process then, this may involve a couple of things. It may involve mending, a patch may be placed on it, or there may actually be a rebuild. And the goal here is one, to remedy, to restore, or to renew. By mending, patching, or rebuilding, then the aim is to remedy, to restore, or to renew. As mediators, if we may have this reflection when it comes to mediation processes, when clients are in dispute, then how is trust a factor in the re in remedy to restore or even to renew? It's important for us to then now reflect on what does lack of trust do? So lack of trust damages relationships. And a very important factor is that lack of trust then breeds the fertile grounds for suspicion and creates a hostile environment that hinders goal achievement. So as effective mediators, when we reflect on the role of relationships, so what is the goal? If it is a family, if it is a family, if it's a friendship or it's a business organization, as we have said, we consider trust the backbone of healthy relationships in different contexts, in friendships, in family, in business and in organizations. So if lack of trust damages then these relationships, especially by the next factor, breeding fertile grounds for suspicion and creating a hostile environment that hinders goal achievement. Relationships have a purpose, and that's a goal that we're talking about. They have a purpose. If it's a work relationship, then the employer and expects that the employee will enable the organization to move to the next level by delivering on their work. The employee expects compensation, a good working environment from the employer. And if that is not then provided, then it hinders the ability of the employee to deliver on their roles, which then affects the entire organization in delivery of its goals. In a situation, for example, where the employee does not have then the right environment to go to work in. And so as we continue with this discussion, we are exploring how to identify when trust is broken, how to navigate through repairing and through the process of mediation, how to enhance the client experience. As we said earlier, as mediators, then the goal for us is that we can be able to become more effective mediators. And that is who we are referring to as the effective mediator. So as we become more effective, then it means then that we are able to enhance the client experience and by enhancing the client experience, then we have more people who have positive experiences through mediation. And as a result of that, then more people are able to now give referrals, speak better about mediation, and ultimately then enable mediation to become a stronger force in this nation. So today as we focus on repairing broken trust, as a mediator, and if you can note this down, please reflect on how trust impacts values, the role of trust when it comes to security, and the third thing on permanence. And this, especially these three, these three areas on values, security, and permanence, these are key factors in the development of any relationship. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends, I'm delighted to invite our masterclass facilitator, who is uh, mediator Patricia Ketch. Mediator Patricia Ketch hosts the Wasiliana Hub Effective Mediator uh, uh, Masterclass Series. And as a, uh, as a professional mediator, she's a counseling psychologist. And that's where we tap into her background 
uh, 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 profession and also learning and experience to enable us as mediator to also appreciate and understand other salient areas that can enable us to be more effective mediators. Mediator Patricia Ketch, how are you today? Today is uh, the 29th day of October and we are delighted to be hosting this uh, session as part of uh, our reflections on the International Peace Day 2022. How are you today? I'm fine, Wangare, and I'm excited to be here today yes. uh, and to be able just to learn together with all of you um, how important trust is. Yes, um, and, then, uh -huh. and we thank you for this session. We're looking forward as we make our reflections on the place of trust in relationships and specifically on, as you said, on values security and also just the permanence um, of the relationship. So I welcome you and uh, if uh, any of the colleagues have a question or a comment, please feel free to post it in the, in the chat. Uh, when the presentation is over, we will be able to reflect on a number of uh, queries and inquiries that we have uh, received. Asante sana, karibu sana. Thank you. So I want to start with, um, as an affirmation from Crowsher. And it says that trust can never be restored until the person whose trust was broken allows their partner a chance to earn it back. And where partner is anybody who has broken the trust. So today we are going to learn our objectives that to understand that trust is broad and may be described and expressed in many ways. We appreciate that uh, trust also comes from the inside, feelings, and not only behaviors. Behavior. Recognize the parties involved in the trust process in a mediation, the mediator, the clients, and others. So let's understand what trust is. Trust can be considered a state of mind or an expectation, a behavior, or decision, a process, a mechanism to coordinate expectations or interactions or a moral obligation. Another explanation for trust is reliance on, a, on or confidence in the dependability of someone or something in interpersonal relationships. Trust refers to the confidence that a person or group of people has in the reliability of another person or group. And specifically, it is a degree to which each party feels that they can depend on the other party to do what they say they will do. Um, according to the APA Dictionary of Psychology, it says that the key factor is not the intrinsic honesty of the other people, but their predictability. Trust is considered by most psychologists to be a primary component in mature relationships with others, whether intimate, social, or therapeutic. So uh, it, it means that it is something that can be seen, can be felt. Trust is a central part of all human relations, including romantic partnerships, family life, business operations, politics, and even medical practices. And trust is assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of some, someone or something. It's an emotional brain state, not just an expectation of behavior. Um, trust is a set of behaviors such as acting in ways that depend on another, a belief in a probability that a person will behave in certain ways, an abstract mental attitude toward a proposition that someone is dependable, a feeling of confidence and security that a partner cares. So we can summarize because trust can be explained in very many ways, but I, I will summarize it today that trust is confidence assurance, belief, reliance, resting of the mind on the integrity, veracity, justice, friendship, and the list 
can actually be endless. But that is where I want the list to end for today. Um, trust also comes in different types. Uh, I'll mention them and then just uh, focus on a few of them. Uh, the different types of trust is confidence trust, competence trust, relationship trust, basic trust, authentic trust, organizational trust, self-trust, situ situational trust, and leadership trust. And again, in these types, there can be very many uh, types of trust. I want us to look at these particular ones because this would quite affect us in, um, in mediation. So interpersonal trust, and this is trust between two people based on your own and the other's characteristics and the risk we are prepared uh, to take by entering in a relationship, business or otherwise. So interpersonal is um, it's really to be able to trust in somebody as they say something, as they promise, as they state what they are stating and that they can be reliable. So for example, and I'll give an example of uh, Wangari and myself. And so it is that she can trust that when she calls me to come and talk about anything in the masterclass, then my word, my word will be so sure so that she will not even bother, but know that if I say I'll be here at 11, I will actually be there at 11. And so I am, she can depend on me, she can depend on my word. I can also depend on her because when she calls me, then I'm expecting she will be there and we will be able to, to walk through the masterclass with her. So I can depend on her. So we are depending on each other at an interpersonal level. It's, it's um, that, 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 that is, can be for a stranger and it can be for a familiar person. Then there is the relational or specific trust. This is the expectation that the other person will cooperate, including the perception of the other's attitude and, person, and personality uh, um, traits. So this, this is the confidence usually in an office, or we could call it anywhere else, but I want to specifically talk about an office or a school where you have confidence that your colleague your colleague will do the job as they have been asked to or as you have requested. And you, you would find an example of um, maybe in a company, one person is writing a report that has to be sent out um, to a different place, maybe by midday today or by midday tomorrow. So I hand over this to my colleague who does the sending out of that uh, mail and they just simply put it aside. Or, I, or they hand it in to them and they can send it. So, so in, in that way, I can rely on them or I cannot trust them. So if they are always doing this without the, the sending the mail, without me having to go back to them, then I can have this specific trust on the person. Then there's the generalized trust, the social trust, which is expectation of an individual or group that the word, promise, verbal or written statement of another individual or group is reliable. And let's look at a social club. Take Nairobi Club, for example. I, and, and I know that I can trust if I go there, I will get good food. Or take um, a neighborhood and you, you, you go to this neighborhood and you know that the people in that neighborhood do not drive fast. You can trust that you can walk on the road and you will be safe. That is a generalized trust or a social trust because you're trusting on a group of people. You're trusting on people who are there, you know? And then there's system trust. Having confidence in abstract systems and institutions. I think the best example is having trust in a system like Google. When I get to my machine and I Google, I know that I'm going to expect to have certain information. It's a machine and I'm, I'm a human being, but it's a trust in that sort of system that causes me to trust that if I Google high blood pressure, 
I'll be able to get information on high blood pressure. If I, if I Google child protection, I'll be able to read about child protection. That is a system trust. So that I don't Google child protection and I get a, some different information. I get information on health. Then there is particularized uh, trust, which is contingent on a specific situation or a specific relationship. This, this particular one is a trust that um, I can talk about probably judges. I'm going to court and I'm going to see a magistrate. And I can trust that more than probably I'll trust a mediator because I've never heard of a mediator. But I'm sure that if I go into this place, I will be helped. If I go to the magistrate's office, they'll be able to give me a decision that I can trust they have looked at and is the correct information. So those are the types that I would like to mention and, and just to, uh, to, to get us to understand how trust affects mediation. So what is the cause of broken trust? Primarily, it is um, with socialization factors, including family dynamics and influences. And uh, when we talk about so socialization, um, it's like when a child grows up and they don't trust that their mom will go and come because of the family relationship that is there. Maybe it's an abusive family. Maybe the, the mother just keeps saying, I'll bring you sweets and they don't bring them. I'll bring you fruits. They don't come. And so the child begins to, to have a broken trust. If it is in um, business, for example, uh, I have a business, maybe I'm selling maize, for example, and, and I sell the maize, but I don't weigh it to 50 kgs, like I've said. You buy it, you go and find it is maybe 45 kgs or 40 kgs. Then you come back again and you have the same problem. And so you start believing that all the people in that market are liars. They do not sell you the right amount of food that you have bought. Uh, trust issues are often connected with neg negative experiences in the past. One of the common negative effects is the fact that if, for example, uh, you're doing a succession case um, and you find that there's a party who has already gone ahead before, you, before the family has started and has started processing things and comes back and starts saying, oh, now we have to process, we, we have, have only done part of it. And then you start wondering, how did this happen? So when you now come even to the mediator, you already have this past experience that my brother, my neighbor is a liar. How would I trust them? How can I definitely trust this person? Um, sometimes, sometimes it's friends who have let you down. Uh, they probably have bought something from you. They have promised to pay. They have not paid for it. And, and you've let it go. The next time they are coming back to try and buy the same thing, something else, you have that past experience and you do not want to engage with them. So um, when we are let down or betrayed by people who we trust, whether it's a friend, a partner, a parent, or any other trusted figure or institution, this can interfere with our ability to believe in others. And when we talk about institutions, again, I'll talk about hospitals, I talk about counseling centers, and we talk about um, all sorts of different things. And so we, we, we learn to trust from the way that, um, we, we learn to trust from the way that we have treat, been treated before also. Um, are there any signs or symptoms that we can see and maybe try and help others? 
One is avoiding commitment. People will avoid committing to anything. Um, people may avoid to commit to marriage. People may avoid to commit to a business, um, a, a, a business partnership. You know, you, you find that somebody has been in a business and um, they have been hurt because they have been cheated on or their partner took off with all the money. When they come to now being committed to anything else, they will avoid that. Then there's a, the assumption that people are doing things to hurt you. It's hard to accept kind gestures, compliments or love in general, because one does not believe they are genuine and do not uh, have a guise or for ulterior motives. So for example, if you are in a workplace and uh, you have been hurt because probably somebody um, maybe talked nasty about you, you dressed in a certain way and they, they, they did not um, appreciate. And many times that has happened. As time goes, then you start wondering whether people are actually complimenting you, even when you are dressed well and they tell you, oh, you're smart. You will always ignore that because that is not true. How, how can I be smart? And I've been told this several times. Or even love, you know, as you have been in this relationship, you have thought it is a love relationship. Your partner has looked like they love you and then they break your heart. Then every time somebody wants to love you, even if it is from outside um, a, a relationship, you, you, you feel that it is not love. So you start assuming that any, anybody who is reaching out to you has another motive and not the right motive. Then isolating yourself from others as a result of the assumptions and commitment phobia. Many people with trust issues will withdraw to the smallest sign of trouble. So for example, if I'm working in an office and I have been hurt because somebody is always commenting negative about the way I work, the way I don't keep time, the way, um, the, 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 the way that even when I give them the work in good time, it's like, oh, you're always late. I will then start not committing. I'll assume that people are, are against me and have other motives. And then I will draw, withdraw to my space so that I will not be walking to greet other people. I will not be talking to other people much. I will be in my small space trying to be comfortable within that space. Because if I step out, then somebody will break the trust I have. Then there is constant suspicion, constantly looking for signs of possible betrayal. Those are warning signs. So um, uh, th th there are times when um, trying to look for a good example, uh, a brother and a sister have walked a walk of um, trying to do succession in the family. And each time the brother is like, oh, this is what the, my father said. Oh, this is what so-and-so said. And as this continues, then whatever the sister is saying is a lie. And even in public, the sister is called a liar. When this happens, even when they go for mediation or even when they go for counseling, there's always that suspicion that, mm -mm, is this real? What do you have under your agreement? What do you have under the fact that you want to go for this particular mediation, for this counseling session? There must be something. And you keep looking for, for the same warning signs. Is he going to shout? Is he going to tell me uh, stories that are of the past? What is it that this person is going to do? So there's constant... Um, there's constant suspicion. Then, of course, um, how do you then build this trust? When it is broken, you need to rebuild it 
you need to bring it back. So you consider the reason for the betrayal. The betrayal of trust resulted from a miscommunication or a misunderstanding. And therefore consider, is it because I didn't hear the person? Is it because I didn't communicate well? Is there a good reason? And if there is, then can I go back to that place? Then I have to acknowledge what happened. And um, let's look at a, a case of separation or divorce. There's a miscommunication, you know, uh, you have betrayed me, you, you, have, uh, you have gone out and you've got a baby uh, and you've not told me. And for us to come back to that trust, we must acknowledge, yes, there was a betrayal. Yes, I actually went out and I messed up. Yes, it is true. So the person has to have the courage to acknowledge. And if I'm acknowledging that, my partner should also acknowledge that, yes, something went wrong. Then we state our intention to rebuild the trust. I would like us to come back to that place where we trusted each other where I would tell you my problems and you would keep them to yourself, where you would not go around telling my friends what I have told you. And I am here talking to you as a very dear friend, where you will not break my trust because of, um, of bringing into my situation people who are not concerned. So state that and specifically say, this is how we want to begin this walk anew. Then communicate transparently and honestly. Respect everyone, respect your employees, respect your siblings, respect your partner, that their opinions and their ideas are okay. So work with a lot of respect on what the other people are saying. Then admit your part in the breach of trust. Is there anything I did? And if I did, can I admit it? Apologize for it and make amends for whatever you did to break the trust. Agree, uh, on, uh, agree on action plan with the person that you broke trust with. Admit your part of the breach. I've talked about apologize and we had previously done a masterclass on um, forgiveness, and so that helps with the apology. Um, in mediation, in mediation, we have the mediator, we have the client, and we have the person. So let's look at the mediator first. For the mediator, trust begins with the resume or the CV of the mediator. It is that I have been trained as a mediator, I have worked as a mediator. I have mediated family matters and here I am with you. And so therefore you can trust that I can do this work. And then trust can be earned through contact and disposition by demonstrating empathy. Uh, this must be a difficult time for you. You are going through a divorce. It must really be overwhelming for your family. You are expressing empathy. Then generating rapport and reducing indications of bias. Do not lean to one side. Try and make sure you are, uh, you are really neutral so that you're not leading to the side, hmm, maybe to the woman's side because you're a woman and you have also gone through uh, abuse and you're saying, oh, it is true, this man must really be bad. You know, he must have really done these things. Do not do that. Try and remain as neutral as possible. Then encourage creativity, creative solutions and maintaining neutrality. And this will build a bridge. So be creative about what you're doing. Um, and also maintain neutrality, as I've said previously. Then we must demonstrate confidentiality. And this usually really occurs at the caucus level, whereby if you are in the caucus, you have spoken in the caucus and you're coming back to the main session, you keep everything 
are confidential so that um, you, are, you are not bringing what you carried on the, in the private session into the main session. This will build trust and confidence in what you are doing. And then again, also continuous learning and improvement of mediation skills and knowledge, values, and ethics. And, and we want to thank God for what Siliana has, that we are able to learn outside of mediation many other things. So we learn how to deal with people and not how to deal with a party. Um, for the clients, when trust is lacking, then the mediator has the responsibility to help the party for the clients to build the trust. How do you do that? You treat parties with equal, equally, both parties equally, with dignity and respect. You greet them the same, you, you talk to them in the same tone until they have come into the mediation and you are able to help them. Then behave in a manner that will show that you care and like the client. It doesn't matter whether the client is old, young, they have come in looking shaggy, looking unkempt. This is your client. Would you care for them? Would you like them? In, with the way they have come in, as they come in, so do you like them. And then let the parties know that you are listening to them and understand their problem. The only way we understand listening is if we talk, if one talks and you do not bring in your own information, you check. Yeah, you're saying that uh, I'm so sad today. I went through so much traffic and I don't understand how I'm going to go back home. And then you're saying, you can take an Uber. That is not what the person was telling you. They were telling you that they have come through so much traffic and they're just wondering how they will get back home. And by giving them an option that they can take an Uber, that means you are not listening to them. And then ask non-threatening uh, open-ended questions. Always use the what, the how, the when, um, rather, than, uh, rather than using words like, why are you doing this? Uh, is this the right way to do it? It will be a yes and no. Yeah. So, so say, how come this has happened to you? How come this is, uh, this is happening in this way? Have you thought about it? And then consistently educate and remind parties about mediation. Parties are always a little confused about the mediation process, and it is important for us to remind them. I uh, will speak about that a little as we are doing the process. Um, in, in the process, you need to make certain that parties understand the mediation process, explaining and educating them on, that, on what mediation is about, it's a, not that it is litigation. Tell them mediation means you're coming willingly. Tell them mediation means you, you'll have to uh, talk about any issue you want to bring into the mediation. Tell them how mediation is also a healing process for them. Let them know what mediation is, that it, you are not the one who is the judge. It's not a litigation. They should not expect you to be the one to tell them what to do. Let them be clear about that. They will then trust what you are, what the process that you're going through with them. Then permitting the parties to discuss the problem without interruption. If the parties want to discuss the process, discuss the, the, the issue, then sit back. Let them do the discussion. Let them look through the problem. And that will help them also come, with, come out with solutions that will help them. Do not interrupt. And then uh, in this process also, you should protect the parties from threats, intimidation, or disrespectful behavior during the mediation. There are cases where maybe people have come for um, mediation, assume it is um, a financial issue, somebody is 
needing to be paid because they worked and they were sacked and they did not pay. They were not paid. And uh, sitting with their lawyer, their lawyer will stand and threaten them and tell them that, you know, you are here, but you still have to pay me. Why did you come to mediation? What is this you're trying to do? Where is my money going to come in? Now, you need to protect the person. One, one way so that they can trust this, this, um, this process. One way is just to go to caucus and ask the lawyer to step out and also speak to the lawyer separately and let them know that they need to tone down so that the mediation can go. The other way that somebody can be uh, intimidated is if it's a divorce case and the husband and the wife are there or the people who are divorcing are there and the husband is, has been known to be abusive. And he would say, now, what do you think you brought me here for? Why am I here? What do you expect me to be doing? I cannot sit here like this. You will see when we get out of here. It is up to us to protect this, um, this other party so that they can know that they are protected and speak to the one who is intimidating separately so that this process can be trusted. And like I say, we always demonstrate impartiality. Always demonstrate impartiality. Let's not lean on one side, whether it is in the mediation or before or after, we cannot be uh, on either party's side. Um, uh, building trust in the mediation chambers. So for mediation to succeed, parties need to trust one another. The mediator should try and build this trust. And when trust is lacking, then the concerned party may have to help, the concerned uh, mediator may have to help the parties as we have indicated. We really cannot overstate the need for trust in mediation. And thank you so much. I thank you, uh, our facilitator for today's masterclass, mediator Patricia Ketch, for taking us through such a, um, a, a great way to help us understand trust and specifically the context of broken trust. And how in the mediation chambers we actually can be uh, at uh, the mediation chambers can be a tool for healing what uh, we are referring to as uh, broken trust. Uh, colleagues and friends, and uh, uh, the Wasiliana Hub Effective Mediator Masterclass is hosted to, to support us to be able to expand the conversations of this space that we practice in as, uh, as mediators because we practice in a space that. Um, we, we practice in a space that uh, is actually a very broad space. And many a times I, I, uh, we actually focus more on process and yet there are people uh, who are involved in the mediation. And I really like the way you have taken us through the when it comes to building trust, what, I, what, what we can call the elements that yes, there is the mediator, there is um, the clients and then there is the process. And each of these have a way to be able to um, support in the repairing of, um, of, 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 the, of the broken trust. And um, with that said, um, I know we've, uh, when we were starting off and even just the emphasis of this um, uh, masterclass is that um, trust is the backbone of healthy relationships. And, and that can give us um, a, probably an inquiry, which um, as our facilitator, you can help us appreciate what is the role of healthy relationships? You know, why, why do we really strive or why do we need healthy relationships in society, whether it's friendships, in family, in business, organizations, you know, as governments, just across. If probably you can help us to uh, understand and appreciate, you know, what's the value of healthy relationships. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. In uh, any relationship for conflict to be resolved well and for us to have a healthy 
mental, a mental health that is good, we really need to have trust because when you trust somebody, then you can easily have a business with them. And if I'm trustworthy, then you can always look for me and we can have um, a nation that, that is full of people who are working together because that is important. In a relationship, it builds and matures partners in a relationship, whether it is marriage, whether it is friendship. It trust builds us so that we can move to a place where we have people we can talk to when there's a conflict, people we can talk to when we have a problem, people who we know we can trust when we go to them. It will also build our business when they are trusted that if I'm asking for 50 kgs, I will get it from Patricia. She does not uh, reduce her, her measurements. So that is a helpful way. I'm not sure if I'm answering, but I think, I think that is one reason because then we are living as people who are growing the businesses, growing in a, a, a place where the conflict is really reduced. It's, it's, it's quite interesting that, yes, uh, thank you very much for just that uh, bring, highlighting that. I think for what, what I hear from you is the interrelatedness. And, and, and I believe that uh, when we have the conversation and talk about relationships, it's really a, a, about the inter, interrelationships. And the interrelationships is then now what relationships is about, the connections. And trust then is like a, it's like a fertilizer. And I think it then it makes a lot of sense when uh, when we say that lack of trust damages relationships because it breeds a uh, fertile grounds for suspicion. It's like when it it's not there, it's like you remove the fertilizer. Or when it's there, then now or you add the wrong fertilizer. But when trust is there, then now you add the right fertilizer that enables. Um, let me say that like the relationships um, to be able to, uh, to, uh, to flourish. So mm -hmm. we, we did say that um, repair aims to remedy, to, re, um, to be able to restore or even to renew. And so it means that there are definitely different tactics that could be used depending on what is required. Um, and yet again, when you look at trust in the context of values, because um, uh, trust can be uh, uh, on a basis of values. So that like, generates the loyalty um, in, in, in a relationship. Um, mm -hmm. Also on the context of security. And I think this is also quite an interesting factor when considering trust, that uh, um, because of trust, then you find that people are, are ready to put themselves on the line or to risk, you know, to be at risk versus if they did not trust, um, the, let me say the other person, so if it's goods and services, goods come all the way from you know, foreign countries, from the Americas, from Europe, from Asia, from African countries to Kenya. And the Kenyans um, uh, recipient or this, uh, the recipient trust that, just as you said earlier, that if they're supposed to be 500 packets put together and they are supposed to be green in color, then they will come as 500. And so the Kenyan trader will send the money in advance if that is now how they, let me say, the contract or the agreement is designed. And so it means that they're ready to risk then to, you know, to give their money before they have received the goods. Uh, and also at the same time, I think it's an interesting thing even when talking about like trade side, because when we look at the development of the digital economy, it is really more of a trust economy because you, uh, the, the, the trader, you don't even know who that is. You may never even meet them, but you will place, the order is placed online and at the end of the day, it is delivered later at the doorstep or any other place. Just as you also indicated, um, uh, when it comes, they say like, even if it's um, a farmers, when a farmer says that their produce is organic or that yes, this produce, I have said it yesterday, then the mm -hmm. person is trusting. And so they believe that that produce will not harm them. And so they will buy it from that specific um, producer or farmer when we see the Kebs label. The Kebs label is actually a trust label. And it's for us then as consumers, it's security. We are taking that when Kebs says that these cooking oils have, a, or when we see a Kebs label on a cooking oil, we are trusting not even the cooking oil, we are trusting the Kebs label. Then mm -hmm. now that extends to the cooking oil, which breeds an interesting thing because then it means that the trust can also be a chain, you know, because of one knowing one person or this person, these are their characteristics. Then it means, oh yeah, this is their friend. Then now you also associate mm -hmm. that that friend 
is also, you know, at the same level uh, as they are, which I think really just what you say that trust in its definition is not a straight line. I think the other thing when it comes, especially for us as mediators, when we are dealing with um, mediation um, and uh, where trust yeah, is, is actually um, um, a factor or is the, the, uh, the aspect of permanence. The aspect of permanence is normally about making the future to look clear. Mm. But many a times when we reflect, like for instance, if when dealing with um, a couple that is having a, 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 a dispute, a dispute about their relationship, then many a times you will notice that it's actually a feeling of a threat that, oh yes, the stability that I knew, I knew that, oh yeah, this was why we called home. So if this relationship is not going anymore, where is home then for me? Mm -hmm. And it means that even in the discussions there, that may not be said that, oh, now where is home for me as where is home for me? But that permanence that was coming from now that this is a, um, a relationship, an employer and an employee, the employee is now wondering then, so where is my next rent coming from? Because I would pay my rent from my employment. And I think that's the opportunity for us as mediators when we reflect on this very subtle areas, um, for example, um, like trust, uh, as we reflect on its uh, value or its context as a mediator, as a client, and even um, a process. So um, uh, mediator Patricia Ketch, um, a question that uh, we have uh, is, so is there a duration for trust or this a trust process or trust to be repaired? Or it's really just, you know, takes its own time, different people as they are. So if you can kindly just, uh, yeah, support us in help, helping clarify this as we get into the closing. Thank you. Okay. Um, there isn't a specific time that you would say, and it depends on the individual. Are they willing to repair this? Are they willing to go back to that space of trusting the person? So um, for, for relationships, it is very different. For mediation, it would be best to start trusting within the very first session where you are. Create that trust within that time. Because if we don't do that during that first session, as we meet our clients, then it will mean we shall not have that trust. So again, it differs from uh, situations and even in, for the person. Because even in mediation, I may try to create that trust but if the people coming in are not willing, then it will not be possible. So it has to take somebody to be willing and it must take a time that you can sit down and talk to the person so that you can start building the trust. But it takes a lot of energy on the person who is perceived to have broken the trust to come back and be able to use that space they have been given to prove that they can now be trusted. Okay, yeah. uh, I think that's that's. I think that is quite an interesting context that yeah yeah that you bring in because then it means that uh, we need um, or it's it's it it would be useful as mediators to yes we know that we work within a time frame for instance that oh yeah the mediation is for uh, running for three months or it's for one month again there are. Uh, cost implications to the, 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 the clients in the mediation, this time consideration as a mediator. And so that means then even in taking those consideration, and I think that's why we need to become more effective as mediators so that we can be able to be able to discern much faster, you know, the factors that are playing in the mediation or the factors that would enable and enhance um, this mediation to sometimes even move faster or if there's some things that may be left incomplete, then it's possible to guide the, uh, the, 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 the clients and also sometimes even refer them to, uh, a colleague, to, to other practitioners or other advisors who may be able to support them in the mediation. So with that, um, let's see if uh, we have uh, uh, any uh, of the colleagues who uh, wishes to um, make an inquiry, then uh, we can be able to now get ourselves to um, to, to closing um, to closing the question. Okay, um, so yeah, we see we have uh, Davis, Davis Wafula who is, um, uh, would like to ask a question. Davis, you may kindly proceed if you will unmute from your end, kindly. Thank you, yes. thank you. Um, good afternoon. 
Good afternoon, Davis, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, my name is Davis Wafula. Yes, please. I'm a certified professional mediator, and I operate from Kitale and Lodwa in Turkana. Okay. Um, I have an experience of uh, dealing with the broken uh, trust between uh, uh, litigants mm -hmm. uh, who happen to be brothers and sisters. This is a family of about 10 people, uh, among them ladies and gentlemen, but uh, they, are, they, 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 they have uh, a problem of uh, uh, sharing of uh, property after the demise of their, their late mother. Um, now, it happens that uh, before the demise of the late, late, the late mother, uh, the eldest son in that family uh, uh, moved out of, out of the family. Then he left the younger siblings behind. Now, the younger siblings stayed with the mother until her time for passing on. Now, when now it comes to how do we then uh, share the property of the late mother, which included uh, 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 rental houses and uh, a piece of land way back in Transoya, the, the family that stayed with the mother until her death uh, insists that that is their property and that this elder brother who moved out of the, the family uh, doesn't have any rights. Now, this case has gone through a lot of uh, litigation right from the village, from the village, the chiefs have dealt with the, with the, with the case. The, the DOs that time, uh, uh, the district officers had dealt with the case. Now the case has gone through no, the normal court litigation until it now end, ended up uh, on my desk, I mean, referred by the court. Now, when we brought the parties together, we realized that uh, this uh, lengthy litigation that had taken place had really made you know, the trust so difficult between the two parties. Uh, every time uh, you, 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 you get the parties to talk, the, the one party is so emotional, uh, and, and the funny thing is that we, uh, we, 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 we have been using the court chambers uh, whenever we, we, some of the, the, the court chambers are, are, are free. Uh, the Kitale law court allows us to use the, 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 the free spaces. Then you will find people shouting, some crying, some wanting even to, to fight. I have used all my, 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 my diplomacy and uh, experience of, uh, you know, handling uh, 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 emotions. But uh, these parties, I think, we, we, uh, I realized that uh, I came in late when issues of trust had already uh, uh, deteriorated so much. Um, have I disappeared? Hello. You are there. You are there. Oh, my 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 page has disappeared. But I, if if you are hearing me, then I can proceed. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes, mediator. Yes, Davis. We can hear you well. Yes. Yes. Please now, um, I'm saying that are the issues of the lengthy, the previous lengthy litigations, right from the village up to courts. Uh, have had a lot of impact in terms of uh, trust between the, the parties that, are, that are, I, I tried to to to, uh, to, to, to re reconcile or rather rather to you know to get them you know resolve the, the dispute between them. How do you deal deal with the, such a situation where litigation litigation processes have have um, lasted for more than twenty years, and people are all both parties have hardened so much, how do you deal with that? 
I tried all the diplomacy and all the skills that I've gotten over the years, but uh, the, the parties wouldn't, uh, uh, not both parties, but one party remained adamant. That's my question. Okay, uh, uh, thank you. Very... Before, yeah, you thank respond, you. before you respond, I have the second one. Yes, please. I also tried to, uh, I, 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 I tried to handle a land dispute for, um, a group of farmers who had bought 100 acres of land somewhere in Transoya again. Now, these members had a problem. Uh, the, the members had a problem with uh, with the with their, uh, their, their, their their farm directors. Um, uh, the directors uh, happen to be people who are normally elected by the the the, the, the members of a particular farm. But uh, in this case, it appeared that um, the directors seem to be people in the rural area, in the village. They are not very exposed to town life. They are not exposed. They are, they are very, very innocent, uh, ordinary persons. But some members are learned people. They, could, they, they were teachers. Some of them were you know, uh, working with the different organizations, government. And I, real, I, 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 I all of a sudden realized that uh, uh, the dispute with the, between the, the, the directors and uh, some of the members that were complaining uh, about you know, ownership uh, and the, 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 the ownership of uh, pieces of land on that farm. And yet the directors were disputing that they were not the right members. Uh, I realized that there was also an element of a lot of uh, uh, manipulation. The landed, uh, the landed members uh, even had gone ahead and cheated the, 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 the farm managers that uh, they had put a caution on that piece of land and that uh, therefore the, 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 the managers could not do anything about it. And the poor managers uh, believed in that, and the, the, the case dragged in, dragged, dragged on for almost five years because the, the 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 farm managers didn't know how to go about this issue of uh, uh, removing the caution. But uh, when I interrogated, I mean, in, uh, I interrogated the two parties uh, in a in a session, in a long session that we conducted, the the the, the this uh, uh, claimants. Uh, opened up and said, no, in real sense, there's, there's, there's nothing like a question. We are, we are only trying to see how clever or not clever these uh, my people are. Uh, they, they, they are I mean, the, the, the managers are. So my question is, how then do you deal with the issues of, uh, of uh, manipulation and lies in relation to, to, to the topic that we are discussing? Yeah, thank you very much, Davis, for your general comments for, for starters, and um, uh, because you've actually brought to us uh, uh, cases that, you know, live cases that uh, you're dealing with and that you're handling. And uh, it's also quite interesting that, you know, this, as you've highlighted them, it, they are not peculiar, but yes, each is in its own way, because you've highlighted a case on uh, no, uh, family and wealth transfer. It's not uncommon that we have, whether it's siblings and even sometimes extended family, and there just seems to, the case seems not to be moving. The matter seems not to be moving. And even sometimes, you know, as you raised, for example, in this particular matter, that there is even property. Sometimes you even find that the, now the property is not actually being as well utilized because of the dispute that's ongoing. And at the back of it, I know we sit as mediators and we ask ourselves, Kwani hawa watu hawa only? You know, these people cannot see that they're actually losing, you know, they're actually losing on proper management of that property. But it means that there's something else much deeper, and that's what uh, uh, Mediator Patricia Ketch will be, um, uh, as she um, uh, is able to just um, give us her insights on this, um, uh, on these situations in relation to trust. There must be more that's at play. Because Kwani Hamuoni, you cannot see that, you know, the rent you're supposed to be collecting in the property that is in Transdo in Transzoia, uh, there are people now who are eh, playing on it because you people are not organizing, you know, or cannot seem to get organized. Um, the group of farmers you talked about, what, what particularly captures me is 
the aspect of uh, suspicion, defeat that is around communal and community related, um, uh, communal and community related or initiated initiatives and projects. And again, it's not only peculiar to this particular case that you've talked about. And just as in both cases, what I hear and what, uh, what I hear now as we grow ourselves as more as effective mediators is how can our acumen be, you know, so heightened that, you know, when we are starting off on a particular case, we are able to even start seeing, you know, very quickly, what are the opportunities and areas of defeat, you know, and we can even put them on the table, you know, like right away. What is the opportunity that, because now it means that when I move into a case, just because we've held, like, for example, this particular semester class session and Davis has, uh, Wafula has talked to us on this case that he's talking about uh, with the land, uh, the, the group of farmers, there's probably certain documents that now as a mediator, I will be very quick to ask for. Or if you say that, oh yeah, there's, uh, there's, I mean, the, the, that this land cannot be sold because of the uh, five particular reasons, oh yes, where's the document to show for it? So it means I am more heightened as a colleague and that's why these sharings are quite useful for us. So with that, I think if we can kindly invite our um, masterclass facilitator, mediator Patricia Ketch, you know, what have you heard? How can you uh, assist us as mediators? Because you say there's, there's the mediator, there are clients, and there's also the process. Karibu, mediator Patricia. Thank you. I, I would have loved to know from you, Dan, uh, Davis, the, the brother who went away, do they have their own land? Are they, are they living in their own place? The, the elder brother uh, moved away from the family land, mm -hmm. which he happens to have bought for, 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 for the, the late mother. Uh, oh. So he, he surrendered that piece of land and then mm -hmm. he went and bought his uh, own land elsewhere and settled with his uh, nuclear family. Now, uh, it is now this, same of, uh, this piece of land, five acres, that he bought and uh, left uh, to the family that now the younger lady, the younger, uh, the younger family uh, has, has, has stuck to, and they don't want him to inherit even a, 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 a piece uh, after the death of the mother. And then the younger, the, the, the elder brother again says, those plots, uh, the rental houses in Nairobi, somewhere in one of the estates in Nairobi, were also constructed by him when he was working with the government before he retired. So again, he says uh, he has contributed uh, immensely, uh, immensely in, in the acquisition of the, 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 the two properties, but uh, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the gist of the matter is, is this. When, 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 um, when before the, the late mother uh, passed on, she 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 separated with the with the with the with the, the, the first husband, who is the father to the eldest son. You get me? Then uh, the, she she remarried, and now that is when this younger younger family uh, came up. You get the the, the, the you get the, the story. Yes. <laughs> now we have to uh, one mother uh, mm. with the, with the two fathers. The younger, mm -hmm. the younger children have their own father. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the elder son has his own father, mm -hmm. but they share the mother. And the question is, this elder brother is the one who contributed to, towards establishment of, all, I mean, acquisition of all the, 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 the property in dispute. Mm -hmm. So then there's a serious, uh, serious, um, uh, ganging up, and uh, uh, I've already explained that I don't want to repeat. Uh, the, 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 whenever you bring these part, two parties together, the emotions are so high that uh, you, you, just, you just wonder where, where, where to start and where, 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 where to stop. That's the, that's the issue. Yeah. So, 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 so there's, there's quite a bit of uh, issues that come up. One is that he is feeling cheated and robbed of his property, which property I would say he had bought for his mother. 
So he's okay. seeing like he's the one who is the loser. Yes. Then, then, then of course, uh, there's that lack of trust that my mother remarried. Why did she remarry? And then now her other children are coming in. So just listening to you, this seems to be um, conflict that may have begun even when the mother was alive, that the two families did not agree. But the most important thing as we look through trust and forgiveness is that both parties must now come back to a place of trust. It may not even be in your place because sometimes the time is very short. So you may not, you may, may just help them to understand that um, they are losing a lot by, by not agreeing. They are losing a lot of years because they're also growing old. That, that is what you can bring to their, uh, to their notice. But if there are people who you can walk with separately, not necessarily in caucuses, maybe even by saying, I will see you separately, I will see you separately, and get people who they trust to talk to them and to let them come back to a place of forgiveness and a place of trust. That would be the only way forward for you. So I don't know how much time you have because with, with that, without, without understanding that I, I am prolonging this conflict instead of saying I am hurting because my mother remarried because now my step brothers and sisters as are in this home, I'm making it look like it is me who bought it, so it is mine. So it, it's, it's a process that will be slow, very slow, but it's a process that the party needs to understand that there must be a time of letting go something, of letting go a portion, of letting go of their pride, of letting go of their pain that their mother never continued living on their own when he expected, expected her to. I'm not sure if I'm helping very much, but I think that that would be the starting point to bring back the trust. Yes, yeah, you, you, are, you, are, you are trying to help. I, I think I, do, I even tried uh, the, the, the issue of uh, the, the dealing with the matter through caucuses. But um, the challenge is that uh, uh, the elder brother is in Kitale, I am in Kitale, my office is, is in Kitale, so we are able to, to meet uh, at any time. Uh, but uh, the, 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 the representatives of the, the, the younger family are based in Nairobi. So whenever we have a mediation se session, she has to travel all the way from Nairobi and uh, she's always complaining about the cost of travel, the cost of uh, putting up, so immediately after the session ends, she wants to travel back to Nairobi immediately. So that again makes the, the defeats the, the, the whole essence of uh, you know the, uh, the, the conducting you know caucus so that uh, you know I try to bring uh, the parties together. But for the elder son, I talked to him uh, in my office separately. I asked him, my friend, uh, I, do you have a, a problem uh, in relation to? To, to property, for example, do you have enough land for yourself and your family at the moment? Uh, he says, yes, I have more than 10 acres. Uh, and then I, I was like, uh, do you really, do you badly need the part of uh, the five acres that uh, you bought for your late mother? He says, uh, I could actually surrender that piece of land if I wanted. But uh, I'm, 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 I've decided to fight because of the, rude, the rudeness and, and the nature of uh, the behavior of the younger family. Because I own all paper, uh, papers for the property in Nairobi. I own the title deed for the land in, 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 in Kitale. And yet they, they, they don't respect me. They don't, they, 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 they think they can, they can get away, they can, they, they can fight me and get away with it. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm only fighting because I'm angered by, by, by the rudeness of the, 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 the family. So eventually, um, uh, what has happened is that um, 
this elder son has actually gone ahead and uh, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, uh, and uh, plowed all the five acres in, in Kitale. Uh, the, the, against even the court, some court orders that were issued. Uh, he's gone ahead and started, sent some, 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 some you know, uh, uh, agents to collect uh, rent from some of the rooms in Nairobi uh, by force, because he thinks that the litigation processes have lasted for, for too many years and uh, he, 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 he's just, he feels somebody's playing around with him. So he's trying to use now force. So the issue of so, caucuses could not work because of that. Hmm. So, so one, one thing we must also remember as mediators that we cannot, we cannot solve a problem unless the parties are ready to solve it. You can only do what you can and the rest of it, we, we, we leave it to them. And, and where you sit, you feel fulfilled that you have given them all the tools to re resolve the matter. You have given them all the information to resolve the matter. You have tried to bring trust and it is not working. And then you say, I have done my best and there's nothing more I can do. And thank, thank you for the sharing. Thank you so much. It's always encouraging to have somebody share. May I hand it back to, to Angare so that um, we can we can bring this to an end. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, thank you very much, and uh, 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 mediator and, and uh, Davis of Fula, Thank you for for those uh, those comments, which we, we may not be able to exhaustively um, conclude on. Um, uh, let me say, like what to do or uh, what is possibly at play. But this is uh, just an opportunity for us to as mediators to share and. Uh, you may feel free to be able to uh, connect with uh, the, co the colleagues and uh, directly on the the, the, the mediators chats that uh, that we have and also be able to have further exchanges. And that is the intention of having the Kenya mediators uh, groupings that we have so that we can be able to connect with each other um, directly there. Uh, I'd like to, to, to just share uh, based on the two, uh, the two contributions from uh, Davis on uh, the family uh, wealth um, um, uh, mediation and also the, 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 commun the communal group of, of, of farmers and the contexts that um, have been highlighted. And uh, Davis's uh, remarks with how he's also been just moving at handling it. And this is a statement on the smart of compromise in mediation. Uh, compromise is defined as a settlement of differences by mutual concessions, an agreement reached by adjustment of conflicting or opposing claims, principles, etc., by reciprocal modification of demands. Typically, in a compromise, both parties mutually agree to make concessions. I think in this context that you're talking about where uh, uh, Davis, especially the one for the family, I think that what is being called on the family is making concessions. There are other matters at play which relate to emotions, uh, what mediator Patricia Ketch was highlighting that there is you know, other family backgrounds. I mean, you hadn't even mentioned to us, but she could pick, there's probably other things. And then when you, I mean, expanded the conversation, you realize that there's much more. Um, um, ar around the family. And so as we have the, and conclude on, on this conversation relating to uh, building uh, broken trust, we also, we have the um, initial, uh, let me say quote from uh, uh, one of the gurus around this work on uh, Krosha who affirms, trust can never be restored until the person whose trust was broken allows their partner a chance to earn it back. I think as mediators, it's for us to be able to have this sensitivity and to be able to highlight it in our mediation rooms. And especially as we have those caucuses that yes, I can sense trust may have been broken. Is, am, I, am, I, am I actually uh, yeah, on the right track? And if that is the case, how open are you to be able to repair or to, you know, to be able to restore this trust? And it can only be done by the one for whom the trust has been broken. And then it's like inviting um, the, the other person. So I thank you very much colleagues and friends for joining us in this conversation as we are focusing on repairing uh, broken trust with emphasis on just a focus as a mediators on the values, security and permanence 
when it comes um, to trust. So today has been our session on uh, dealing with repairing broken trust in the mediation chambers uh, with our masterclass facilitator, mediator Patricia Ketch, who is a counseling psychologist and mediator, um, Wangari Kabiru, the convener at Rosilian Hub and a chartered mediator. Today is on the 29th day of October in the year 2022, which is when we are using this time to celebrate the International Peace Day, which is celebrated every year on September 21st as part of the United Nations. I thank you for joining us on this uh, call and this conversation. We will close with the words of the Kenyan National Anthem as our closing prayer, and we will have the second stanza of the National Anthem. I'm Kenny Nduguzetu, Tufanye Sote Bidi, Nasi Tujitoe Kwanguvu, Nchi Yetu Ya Kenya, Tunayo Ipenda, Tuwe Tayari Kuilinda. Once again, colleagues and friends, I thank you very much for joining us in this conversation. And thank you very much to our facilitator, mediator Patricia Ketch for guiding us through. And we look forward that colleagues and friends we will be able to join with each other in other sessions that are hosted in due course. So once again, thank you very much for joining us as we are discussing today's Effective Mediator Masterclass on dealing with repairing broken trusts in the mediation chambers. Asante sana and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.